Uh, Mary Hawkins was the head of Pemberton Hall from 1910 to 1917. She was hired by President Lord uh, to run that building. Last four or five years, I started to wonder a bit about a family history and, uh, and uh, we started doing the genealogy. Well, Gilbert is the great uh, grandnephew of Mary. Uh, we heard from him uh, last spring and he was interested in kind of tracing his aunt's genealogy. But to our surprise, uh, we did not know that uh, she had come to Charleston and uh, created such a impression on the people at the university. Well, during the Hawkins's visit, um, uh, they presented the university with this sculpture, and uh, it's actually one of three pieces that are all very similar. Uh, Gilbert has one in his home, his sister has one in her home, both of those are in New Zealand, and then this piece is here. We uh, uh, presented to the uh, uh, university and to Pemberton Hall a uh, sculpture, and this sculpture is uh, of the greater family of, of uh, the outer is the greater family of uh, the university. Um, well, the sculpture was made by an artist named Carrie Strongman. Uh, and Mr. Strongman is an artist in New Zealand. Uh, he is a person who works with a very specialized wood um, in New Zealand. Yeah, this uh, uh, artwork or sculpture uh, is made out of Kauri, which is a New Zealand uh, native timber. It grows on the top of the North Island. And as Gilbert explained it, it's a way of sort of tying together uh, the family members, uh, which he feels also includes the university because of, of um, Mary's significant impact on the residents here and, uh, and the sculpture itself sort of symbolizes all of that. Well, we're really fortunate that uh, Jeff Beauchart, who's a recently retired uh, sculpture faculty at the university, um, was made aware of this gift, and uh, it was his suggestion that we should actually build uh, the frame for this piece out of the old oak tree uh, that was next to Old Main that actually came down last year, the over 300-year-old uh, bur oak. Well, it seemed appropriate to me when they asked me if I could help make the mounting because it was something they wanted to do something a little bit special for, and that's about the same time they were taking down the old oak tree by Old Main, which is uh, by some estimates 300 years old when, when it was finally removed and they salvaged a lot of the wood. Um, the university gave me permission to use the, the piece of wood and uh, basically it's where a limb branches into two pieces and what I wanted to use was the, the crotch of the wood, the part down here, because I wanted to make little clamps to hold the side so that the clamps aren't really significant. Um, visually significant. I want them to see the sculpture, but I also don't want the sculpture to be able to re be removed. Uh, and so uh, the university was, was pleased to let me use that, and I feel privileged to have the opportunity to work with something that's so significant to the university. So he was the one who actually uh, had the wood milled, uh, built the frame, uh, stained it to, to match the environment, and uh, put it all together. So it's a sort of an artist uh, kind of helping another artist uh, with the way the, the thing is presented. And the thing about the oak tree that's so special is, you know, it's likely that Mary Hawkins walked under that very tree uh, over 100 years ago. And uh, so it seems very fitting those two things would be tied together. And then uh, Mark Hudson, the director of housing, invited me to come down to Pemberton Hall and look at the space in which it's going. And I took measurements. Uh, I also looked at the trim in Pemberton Hall. I mean, it's on the National Historic Register. So, I mean, there are certain characteristics, but I wanted the sculpture to look like it was directly on the wall, not in a picture frame. Um, so what I did was I came up with basically a frame that looks like all the trim. And then the sculpture actually will get mounted directly onto the wall. So when you look through the center of the sculpture, you will actually see Pem Hall. You're not going to see the back of a picture frame. You're not going to see a mat or anything. It's going to be right there. So it's, it's kind of like a layered effect. We have the PEM wall that's white, lath and plaster. We have the mountings and then we have the sculpture right there. And at the top of it will be the bronze plaque that talks about the history of PEM Hall and Mary Elizabeth Hawkins. Uh, 
and what her role was that it's part of the building um, will be repositioned as, as part of that framework directly above the sculpture. So it's going to be a nice little like house uh, right there housing the, uh, the piece. If you have a bad day, uh, come and rub the sculpture and it will enhance your day. It will make you feel good. Likewise, if you're having a very happy day and you want to, uh, 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 just put some good energy in. Come and just feel it and rub it. Uh, it was interesting that after I had uh, uh, suggested this to the students, it was placed on a table in the front of the uh, uh, room and they came up and one of the young lasses came to us and said, it works. I went and rubbed it and I could feel our calmness. And this is what we hope. Uh, it will help people as we know that Mary Hawkins was a caring and strong person and would want the best for the students. Um, well, I think the bottom line is anytime you can connect our history to our uh, to our future. I think we're, we're kind of a bridge for that. And our ability to have people that are connected to someone like Mary Hawkins, who is so significant on our campus, um, it sort of makes the current generation of Eastern folks aware of that. And um, I think we better understand our future by better understanding our past.